I think in the past episode, we talked about like one of Jeffree Star's lines. Uh, there was a, a couple of years ago, he put out a really cool um, uh, palette that um, I had pre-ordered and it ended up changing at some point because there was a specific green color in the palette that uh, had a specific ingredient that was like just like really hard to find at the time. So in order to like fulfill all the palettes and everything and get it to people like in less than a year, uh, he ended up like removing that color and it ended up coming out later and everything like that. So I always found it interesting, like, you know, it's powders and all these like different chemicals, like how do they come up with these formulas and, and how do these things actually, you know, um, play when it comes to pricing and quality and, and things of that nature is the U S even, one of the top places and so to kind of give you before we show the clip to give you kind of like an outline of uh different countries and what they're known for because a lot of this goes into the proprietary technology that a lot of these um makeup manufacturers own right so some areas and some countries are better at other formulas compared to uh maybe a different country just because like the patents are in one country compared to the others so quickly here to kind of go over it for you guys so a big one in particular is a skincare. A lot of that comes out of Switzerland. That's what they're most known for. Uh, and that's for a couple of brands out there that you might know of. Uh, Beauty Pie comes out of uh, Swiss Labs. Uh, a lot of really high-end redo, uh, high-end skincare comes out of there. Italy is really known for high-end premium makeups like Dior, uh, some of the more expensive ones in hair care too. Uh, again, Pat McGrath actually comes from from out of Italy. Uh, uh, Charlotte Tilbury comes out of Italy as well. Uh, Beauty Pie has some of their hair stuff comes out of Italy. Uh, Devines or Devines, it's part of the shampoo line mm -hmm. out of Italy too. Uh, Japan, known for skincare. Uh, Tatcha, right, is a Japanese made product. Um, that's probably the biggest one that people really know about. Uh, and then Germany, uh, we are talking about Germany earlier, really known for their. Uh, pencils, eye pencils, uh, especially the precision ones. They have a special like uh, patent, it sounds like uh, a certain warehouse does in Germany. Uh, oh. And so, yeah, so like Victoria Beckham's uh, uh, pencils come out of there. A lot of those high end uh, pencils, MAC pencils also come out of uh, Germany too. Uh, Korea is really known for just overall innovative formulas. They they have a lot of manufacturers out there that are on top of and trying different things. Oh, the sun the sunscreen is the best. Out of, yes, yeah, uh, yes, yeah, right. Uh, so a lot of that stuff. Hourglass comes out of uh, Korea. Uh, Rare Beauty, a lot of uh, their matte liquid liners come out of Korea too. So a lot of like kind of the new invent to formulas that people are trying will come out of there. Uh, France is known a little bit more for the fragrance side of things. So uh, Chanel, of course, comes out of France. Uh, a few other big ones as well. Um, New Zealand, known a little bit actually more for the sustainable products, like the organic products that don't have a lot of man-made chemicals or anything like that. And then I think there's one more on my list. Yeah. Oh, uh, Australia, really known for SPF and sun care mm -hmm. products too. Clarins, I think is a big one uh, that you probably heard of. Kate Somerville is another one too. Uh, so it kind of showcases, oh, last one too, Body Care UK. That's what they're kind of, Lemur is a, another one out of there. Um, uh, aromatherapy products come out of there too. And so, yeah, that, that kind of showcases to you like, okay, there's different places across the globe that people will uh, to watch. But in this clip here, there's a, there's a, group uh, and actually like just came out on like a list from last year it's one of the top like 10 um for at least for ads or for like pushing products one of the uh most uh interactive tiktoks and, and instagram real accounts out there but uh it's because the main girl that you're gonna see talking actually spent years in makeup manufacturing so mm -hmm. a lot of times she'll go through and and one of my favorite things she'll do a lot of times is like tell you what companies own certain things so you know like mm -hmm. those probably the same formulas you're just buying more for like Dior when it's actually 
might be owned by L'Oreal at the end of oh, the day. Great. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, have, I have Dior uh, liquid foundation and concealer on as we're talking right now. <laughs> yeah, I think it's um like uh, L'Oreal owns um what's the we all have it the um like uh, setting spray. Oh, okay. Uh, Infallible? Uh, no, no, no. The purple one that's like... Uh, oh, uh, uh, Urban Decay All yes, Nighter? Yes. So it's like, any, you know, so you kind of think, okay, well, what am I... When you're talking about your money, right? What am I putting it towards? And now, even though they're owned, a lot of times it's like one ingredient more that makes it huh. better. But uh, yeah, so she they educate you on a lot of this stuff. And in this uh, video, you'll kind of see how you can read labels and how you should interpret them and their supply chains too. Well, hold on. It, in USA Assembled, Dominican Republic. I love that we have our creators engaging in the mating content. She's saying two things that I was a little upset with. Dominican Republic never heard of shadows coming from that place. If you are gonna engage in it, definitely dig a little deeper. When you see something that says bulk made in the USA, the batching of the powders, the raw materials, that would happen in the US. It means they mixed up all those powders and they pressed them in the case of eyeshadows in the USA. And then they ship those pans out to the Dominican Republic to glue and assemble in the Dominican Republic. That's what she read anyway, right? She read it, but then she said that she's never seen eyeshadows made in the Dominican Republic. Because the eyeshadow weren't. is not made in the right. Dominican Republic. So that tells you this is not the same formula as pretty much any other shadow palette out there. There are many, many, many other eyeshadows on the market that do the exact same thing. She also did share some commentary on how eyeshadows are typically made in China and Italy. All shadows are usually from China or Italy. Of course, China, Italy do lots of shadows, but let's not forget Canada. They were some of the first to develop certain proprietary technologies as well. I just want to make sure we're all getting all the nuanced information. I've done the full tasting menu in the beauty industry. I've worked on the manufacturing side. I've worked on the brand side. And if we're going to be talking about where things are made and we're not sure, fam, send the videos to us. We'll make sure to do all the research needed to get all the good information to you. One last thing, Makeup by Mario's Ethereal Eyes palette that just launched Christmas, made in the USA, assembled in the Dominican Republic. Super interesting. Because a lot of people, so she's talking, the the the, for, the girl that she's talking about is reviewing Kim Kardashian's new makeup line. And a lot of people are saying it's just the Mario palette. And so that's what she's kind of pointing out at the end is it could just be the Mario palette because oh, wow. they're likely probably made at the same facilities and shipped together. And then once they get to the Dominican Republic, they just stamp them differently and uh, put them in a different packaging and then send them back to us. Right. So, yeah, definitely. There's a, another one in here where she gets into, oh, who owns who at Sephora? That one's really cool. If you want to click that one. Uh, cause it also kind of goes into what I was talking about. Like who, if you go up a little bit more, that, that white one to the left, who owns who at Sephora, oh, uh, yeah, oh. this one's funny for like where you want to kind of save your money as well. All right, let's play this clip. On Sephora. Basically, LVMH is going to own 30% probably of the store. What does LVMH stand for? Louis Vuitton, Moet, Hennessy. Really? Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> Did you just have an epiphany? Yes. <laughs> Let's do it. Benefit. LVMH. Pick up by Mario. This is privately held. They've actually raised capital, so that means they're backed by venture capital. NARS is still owned by Shiseido. Beauty Blender, to my knowledge, privately held company. Huda Beauty is private equity owned. I'm pretty sure Merit is owned by venture capitalists. Urban Decay, L'Oreal. Say, I want to say, is Venture Capital. Long Home is L'Oreal. Clinique is Estee Lauder. Too Faced, Estee Lauder. Rose Inc. is owned by... Blah, 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 blah. I know this. The biotech company, Amaris. Tarte is owned by Jose. Luxury brand partners is the incubator that does one size. For a collection is, of course, LVMH. Mm -hmm. Romani is owned by L'Oreal. Hourglass is owned by Unilever. Gucci. This is going to stump me. I think Cody. Cody. Cody, yeah. Yes. Valentino, shock. I remember researching this. It's L'Oreal. Okay. Dior, LVMH, they have a really big stake in ownership, 40% of the LVMH stock. Wow. Which is really large. Yeah. Dior be doing something right. Okay. I think we forgot this little gondola section, which is like the LVMH island. Miss Fenty is owned by LVMH. Well, technically, Miss Fenty is owned by Kendo. Kendo is owned, owned, owned by LVMH. Wow. So is KBD, and so is Mega Forever. Glossy A is Venture Capital. Rare Beauty, I want to say, is private. I think we're good. I think we did the walk. Good. Job. I think I got like maybe 80%. Vanessa Maris. No idea. Vanessa, <laughs> how'd you do it? <laughs> LVMH. Oh, that that is, cool. that it's super interesting because you wouldn't think that, I guess, well, it makes a lot of sense of the manufacturing process of where it's being created and then how you can attach that to the label, depending on where it's being assembled. 